What's up, geeks, nerds, and all that line between? I'm just a common fan back with a new video, and today we're talking about the summer movie season. Now, we are in the beginning of June, and that means we are already knee deep in the summer movie season. I feel like every summer, the summer movie season starts a week earlier. We already got Avengers in April, we got Solo, we got Deadpool, uh, but there are still so many more movies that are coming out, and I'm going to give you my top five. Is that yeah, that's five. My top five summer movies that I'm still looking forward to. And then I'm also going to sprinkle in some honorable mentions. Some movies that I don't really want to see in theaters. I mean, I do want to see them in theaters, but I'm not going to go out of my way to see them. If the opportunity presents itself, I'm there. But with having a kid and work and stuff like that, I more than likely will probably have to wait and catch these on Redbox or digital or streaming or something like that. Now, I do have my phone. Because when I was doing this list, I had a top five, but then I didn't realize that there were so many other movies coming out this summer. Uh, and so I'm going to give you my top five. I'm also going to sprinkle in some honorable mentions in there as well, okay? So, and these are in no particular order. I didn't put these in order. These are just all the movies that I want to see that are coming out. First, I want to talk about The Obvious. comes out in, what, two weeks from now, I believe? The Incredibles 2. This movie is years, and probably a decade, in the making. Um, I can't believe Disney gave us so much stuff in between. Um, we, we've gotten more Toy Story movies. I mean, we've got more Cars movies, more Planes movies, instead of getting a uh, actual sequel to Incredibles. Um, whenever The Incredibles came out, I'll never forget. I was in college, uh, I was in high school actually, and I went to go see it with with a friend of mine, um, and I remember this distinctly. Because even though it was not a date, it was far from a date, her mother really thought it was a date. And I'll never forget, she handed me some candy before I left her house. And her, and her daughter was like, what, what is this for? And she was like, oh, this is so you can munch on this in the movie theater instead of munching on my daughter. Yeah, her mother actually said that to me. Uh... So, but we went to the theater, uh, we saw Incredibles, it was amazing, no munching was happening because it was just two friends going to see a film, um, but I loved it, I mean, I was immediately enthralled with uh, Elastigirl, and of course my favorite character was Dash, and then my favorite character at the end became Jack-Jack, when she realized that he had all these powers and that he was a super, but I think it was such a great story that didn't focus strictly on you know, superpowers or heroic, uh, heroics, heroics, her, her, heroics, heroism. Maybe we'll go with that word. I didn't say it because I can't talk today. Um, and I, I remember the training montages in the train yard with Mission Incredible and all this kind of stuff. I mean, I thought it was great. I thought it had a great villain with syndrome. Um, and still, people to this day still quote uh, the line from Samuel L. Jackson who plays Frozone when he's in his house and all this chaos is happening outside. And he's yelling, honey, where is my super suit? And his wife goes, why do you need to know? <laughs> now, I could break that down in a separate video because it's kind of disappointing that the only black female character in the movie was reduced to only a voice and a kind of like a nagging negative voice um, as well. So I really hope that in the sequel, Hopefully, Frozone is out there getting his ass kicked, or maybe the Incredibles are getting their ass kicked, and then his wife comes out, and turns out she's a super, and then she saves everybody. You know, that would be a great way to redeem that character, instead of just having her be a voiceless character that we never see. So hopefully, I hope we get to see Frozone's wife in the movie. But the whole storyline about how Elastigirl is getting back into being a hero and kind of she's the one that's going to be the breadwinner for the family and Mr. Incredible is going to have to stay home and take care of the kids and Jack-Jack is spazzing out because he has all these different types of powers and he's all over the place and you know there's um they're trying to make their supers are trying to make a comeback and there's this new corporation that you can't really trust I mean it's all in the trailer I love it can't wait to check it out um the second film I'm really excited about is the new Mission Impossible film. Now, I don't know if this is in my 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, but I know it's called Mission Impossible Fallout. Let me tell you what, I'm not a huge Tom Cruise fan when it comes to him as an actual person, human being. 
But let me tell you, or really his movies, but when it comes to Mission Impossible, I am there. I have seen every single one. They Each one of them get better and better and better. And at this point, they're kind of like the Fast and the Furious films for me, right? Where just the most ridiculous, over-the-top action you can think of. And I love it. <laughs> I am here for it. Show me Tom Cruise holding on to a plane that's flying off, jumping off the side of a cliff and barely catching it. All that stuff. I am here for it. Plus, this is like the Infinity War fuck like of the franchise. Like they're bringing back everybody. Simon Pegg is in it. Ving Rhames is in it. Um, Michelle Monaghan, I believe, is in it. So they're bringing back all of these characters from the previous films as well, which I think is just going to make it even better. So the action is going to be top notch. Um, that te the the teacher trailer that we saw definitely my favorite trailer of the year so far. Um, we also get to see the mustache in action, the infamous mustache that Henry Cavill couldn't shave, so they had to remove it with computers for Justice League, and it looked terrible. Uh, so I can't wait to see the mustache in action. But yeah, um, Henry Cavill looks great in it, Angela Bassett looks great in it, Ving Rhames looks great in it, Simon Pegg, Tom Cruise, Michelle Monaghan, I mean, I think even Jeremy Renner is in this as well. So I cannot wait to see Mission Impossible Fallout. Now, my next movie that I want to see is probably not, not your typical summer movie, and that's The First Purge. Now, I'm a big horror fan. Now, I'm not going to say I'm a crazy horror fan. I don't have like horror movie posters or horror movie figures because that stuff honestly freaks me out. Um, whenever I see a horror movie, I actually can't sleep with the lights all, all off. Um, I'm, not, I'm not even joking. Like, it scares me for probably that night, maybe even into the next night. So I will never have any horror memorabilia in my actual home, but I do love going to see the movies. And this is one that I really hope I can see in theaters because there's nothing like seeing a horror movie with other people in the theater. Um, I'm also a huge fan of the Purge movies. I actually have still not seen the first Purge with Ethan Hawke, but I saw, I think there's two more. I saw the, the other two, and then I think this is the fourth one. Uh, and then apparently this is supposed to be uh, a prequel to all the others because you know that's what happens in Hollywood you, you run out of ideas for a franchise that you just start over from the beginning um I really was it was my hopes weren't too high for this movie until I finally saw the trailer and the fact that they have a black cast like this movie focuses on a black family dealing with the first purge and there's probably going to be a lot of racism stuff in there I mean I hope it doesn't get too political because I really just want to go and have fun but I'm yeah, very interesting to see, you know, because black people, we don't we do not do well in horror movies. That's clear. We always are the first ones to die. Hell, we were the first on-screen character to die in Infinity War. So we don't really do well in these type of situations. But to have a whole family as the main character in a horror movie, um, I can't wait to see how this turns out. Now, before I get into my last two, I want to go over my list of other summer movies that I want to see. Kind of like my honorable mentions. Now, believe it or not, I tried to shorten this list, and I did, and it's actually longer than my main list. But here are some movies I want to go through them real quick that I can't wait to check out this summer if I have the opportunity to. First one is Skyscraper. Now, this starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Now, this was like this close to being on my top five, but um, I don't know. I just may not. But The Rock is like the king of you know, B-level action movies, and he always does well. I thought Jumanji would do terribly. Apparently, it's very good. I have to check that out on Redbox because I did not see it yet, but apparently Jumanji's very good. Uh, Baywatch was terrible, but very uh, random miss in The Rock's career. And, you know, uh, I heard very good things about Rampage. I didn't check that out, but I do want to see that. And now we got Skyscraper. And Skyscraper is just one of those 70s, 80s B-action movies in the vein of, like, Die Hard. You got a giant skyscraper, bunch of explosions, fire, a man with, with one real leg, one fake leg, has to get back up to the top of, of the skyscraper to stop the bad guys and save his family. Come on. Um, this is just like the other movie he did, um... Uh, I can't remember what it was called now. But there was like a... Oh, San Andreas. I went into that movie having super low hopes. I went to a IMAX screening and I was blown away. So Skyscraper is a definitely movie that I want to see in theaters if I have an opportunity to. Another one is Tag. For me, this is going to be my... This is what Hawkeye was doing in the Infinity War. 
do, doing Infinity War. Um, tag is a movie where you have a bunch of friends who've been playing the same game of tag since they were kids. Now they're adults. Jeremy Renner is the king of the game, and now they're all trying to team up together to tag him to get him out. I'm sure that it, it'll end up taking a different turn. I'm sure, I'm sure there's a swerve in there somewhere, but they haven't revealed it in the trailers, and I really want to check that movie out. Um, there's a couple of other ones. There's uh, Ocean's 8, which has uh, Sandra Bullitt playing the sister of George Clooney's character from the other Ocean's movies, and it's a whole cast of women they are going to rob um, I think it's some kind of like Oh, the Met Ball. They're going to rob the Met Ball. And they're going to get a bunch of money and stuff. And it has such a great cast. You got uh, Sandra Bullock, Kate, Kate Blanchett, uh, uh, Mindy Kaling. I think Sarah Paulson is in it. Rihanna, um, Anne Hathaway. Um, I can't remember who the other two uh, women are. But it looks good. I definitely want to check that out. Um, another one is The Spy Who Dumped Me. I actually didn't know this movie was coming out, but it stars Mila, 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 Mila Kunis and Kate McKinnon and, and uh, uh, Justin Thoreau. And apparently Mila Kunis was dating Justin Thoreau's character. She finds out he dumps her. She finds out that he's a spy. And then her and her best friend, played by Kate McKinnon, gets sucked up into the spy world. This looks good to me because of Kate McKinnon. Now, Mila Kunis is funny. I've actually never seen Bad Moms or the sequel, so I don't really know how funny that is. But I do think Mila Kunis is funny. Kate McKinnon is hilarious. And I feel like Kate McKinnon is searching really hard to find her foothold in Hollywood. Right now, she's just always placed as the funny sidekick. To me, she was the best thing in the... Ghostbusters movie, I loved her. Um, there, she was in that movie recently with with Scarlett Johansson and Zoe Kravitz, like about the the um, uh, bridal shower that turns into a stripper, and the stripper dies, and they try to cover it up. Just weird. But Kate McKinnon is trying to find her foothold, and she keeps being cast as the funny best friend. But I love her humor. I think she's hilarious. I can't wait to check it out. And hopefully this will lead to Kate McKinnon having a starring role in her own film soon enough. Because she's definitely the funniest part of Saturday Night Live. And I just find it so surprising that she is yet to star in her own film. Um, the other two are just like they're going to be like fun action movies. One is uh, called Upgrade. Where a guy gets a computer... Put into his body, he's paralyzed. He gets a computer put into his body. Now he can walk, and the computer can take over his body and do like crazy action stuff. And he's trying to go out and find the people that killed his family. I believe it is. Uh, yeah, it, that just looks fun. I, that's probably definitely going to be a red box movie, um, unless I get like a screening pass for it or something. But it just like it's going to be a fun, gruesome action flick. I can't wait to check that out. Um, another movie is Replicas, starring Keanu Reeves. Um, Keanu Reeves is killing it. John Wick, John Wick 2, they're filming John Wick 3 right now, and so I just want to see it keep up with Keanu. It's about a man trying to bring his family back to life. We know that never really works out well, so I definitely am looking forward to checking that out. Um, and then, the last one on my, uh, uh, honorable mentions list is a movie called Captive State, and it's starring John Goodman and I think uh, Vera Farmiga from, uh, she's been in some movies, but uh, what I know her the most from is Bates Motel. She's a fantastic actress. John Goodman is one of my favorite actors ever. And it's about um, how people are living in this town that was taken over by aliens 10 years before. So, something like that. So it's a sci-fi type of film. Uh, the trailer looks interesting. And hey, it's got two fantastic actors, John Goodman, Vera Farmiga, and so I can't wait to check that out either. Now, it's time for me to get to my last two on my top five uh, summer movies list of movies that are still coming out that I want to see. And the first one, come on, you know me by now, it's Ant-Man and the Wasp. This movie looks incredible. We have a female villain and ghost. You got Lawrence Fishburne, who used to be Goliath in this universe. You have um, uh, Michael Douglas is back. You got... Um, uh, Evangeline Lilly at the Wasp is back, um, finally being able to play the Wasp and putting on the suit. You got Paul Rudd being Ant-Man. And this movie takes place, I believe, right after Civil War and before Infinity War. And I have a bunch of theories on how this movie is going to happen. I'll cover that in a different video. But it just looks great. I mean, 
uh, Ant Man is the is the reset button for the Marvel Universe, right? We we get a sad movie like Avengers: Age of Ultron or Infinity War, and then we get Ant Man to come in and and kind of raise our spirits up. So I absolutely can not wait to check that movie out. And of course, my final movie, Teen Titans, go to the movies now. Whenever Teen Titans was re-released on Cartoon Network as this funny 15-minute childish TV show, I was immediately against it. The original Teen Titans TV show I thought was serious. I thought it was kind of in the vein of Batman the Animated Series and, and the Justice League um, series. And I thought it was like great serious take on these heroes. Um, and they had Deathstroke as a villain. I mean, I thought it was great. But... I have to say that I have fallen in love with Teen Titans Go. The music has gotten me. Um, the night begins to shine. The night begins to shine. Uh, episode was hilarious. Dim legs. Uh, I mean, I can quote Teen Titans Go all day long. And so to see that they're going to do a superhero movie, but use it to make fun of themselves in other superhero movies as well, I think that could be kind of refreshing it may be uh kind of pushing in on deadpool's territory but i think since it's animated and they do really kind of have their own brand of humor i think it's going to turn out very well and that soundtrack is going to be fire well that's it guys those are my top five movies i'm still looking forward to this summer as well as a couple of other honorable mentions that was longer than my actual top five list hope you guys enjoy this list um if you don't mind subscribe down below like the video and hit that little bell in the corner there to be notified of all the videos i'm going to be releasing this week and beyond uh and let me know what are your favorite summer movies are you looking forward to any of the movies that i've mentioned are there other movies that i haven't mentioned that you're looking forward to uh let me know down there in the comments and let's talk about it let's see what we can be excited about uh, for this summer and lord knows after infinity war we need something to be excited about this summer um thank you guys for watching um i think all these movies are great but what do i know i'm just a common fan hey, no, no, no.